Fun Master Mike is back with another very fun chess kid video. Today, we're gonna smash a weird opening. There's some kids out there when they face an opening they've never seen, they get panic. But let me just tell you, if you face an opening you've never seen, if you go back to basics like development, keeping your pieces safe, attacking the weak squares, you'll do just fine. Today, let's smash the Karokan. After e4, c6, let me show you the opening that I played as a kid. I once beat somebody rated 400 points higher because I just listened to my coach's advice. And who's your coach? It's me. Maybe it's somebody else too, but I'm gonna help out, okay? I used to play knight c3 on move too. And when my opponent challenges the center, which is the whole idea of the Karokan, I just ignored my opponent and played knight f3. Now there's several moves here for black. Black could play a move like knight f6, it's perfectly fine. However, often black would take, and when I take back, the next move for black may not be the most accurate. In this position, let's say black plays bishop f5. Looks pretty reasonable, right? Develops, wins a tempo on the knight. But in this position, when we hop back to the square g4, this bishop is already sort of struggling to find a home. If it comes to pin the knight, we'll probably play the no parking sign, and then black will almost certainly just give away the bishop pair, and white will be very happy to win the bishop pair out of the opening. So the bishop often tucks itself back on g6. Let me show you what my coach taught me to do. Boom! h4. And we're just going to play h5. We're going to trap that bishop. Pretty easy to see, right? Okay. Now, I don't really like the move h5 by black because it weakens the g5 square. And actually, we're going to end up playing the exact same thing that I'm going to show you. So black usually plays h6 in this position. Now that this pawn is not guarding the bishop, we should play the move knight to e5. And already we're threatening to get the bishop pair and really mess up black's pawns. If black just plays any kind of normal developing move, let's just say black plays knight f6, we'll be very happy to capture. Now black has a horrible pawn structure with isolated pawns, with double pawns. Nothing's guarding the g6 pawn at all. If you've seen my previous videos on Chess Kid or on YouTube, you know that moving your f pawn is a huge danger. You know that I'm going to try to get my bishop and my queen to this diagonal, and you're not going to be happy because I've got a light squared bishop, and you don't over the internet, friend. You're not going to be happy about that. Let's go back for a second. Now, I suppose black could play a little better by playing a move like queen to d6, and white is still pretty happy. White can either grab the bishop pair, or white can play d4 with the idea of bishop to f4, and that queen is looking a little bit misplaced. She's getting a little nervous being developed so early. Let's go back. The only other idea, and the one that my opponent played in the game, and the one that my coach prepared me for, kind of nice when that happens, was bishop to h7. Now, remember I said the whole theme of crushing the Karo Khan is very quick development. So I played queen h5. Fun Master Mike, why are you developing your queen early? How do I get rid of this voice inside my head? I don't know. Uh, well, I do know why I'm developing the queen early. I don't know about the voices. By playing the move queen to h5, I'm developing with tempo and I'm forcing my opponent to create a weakness. There aren't a lot of good ways to guard the checkmate on f7. For example, let's say my opponent plays queen to d5. Pinning my knight, kind of pinning my knight, and guarding f7, now comes the crusher, bishop c4, developing with tempo. I've got four pieces developed. My opponent only has two, but it doesn't even really matter about development. I'm just winning. When the queen moves, I can take this with whatever I feel like. And uh, yeah, black's king is going down. So let's go back. After queen h5, the only other option really is to play g6. And now comes a very funny move. We ignore the threat on our queen and we play the, the shocker bishop c4 because if he takes our queen, we checkmate with a bishop and a knight. Now our move is not only based on a trap. Even if our opponent does not take our queen, we're still happy with our bishop getting to c4. By the way, there seems to be an alternate good move here, one that my coach didn't teach me. Do I get a refund from chess lessons 35 years ago? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I won my game because of my coach. Now, queen f3 was the alternate good move. And the reason is you got to stop the mate, right? Play a move like knight f6. There's nothing better. Then we can play queen to b3. The queen actually comes around the world. Yeah, she's got a first class plane ticket. She went from Europe over to South America here. She's threatening mate and she's threatening the pawn on b7. There's no way to stop both. Uh, Black could try queen d5. We'll actually take, we will give away our knight, and then all you have to do here is, you know, block the check with the bishop, and you're going to pick up the rook on the next turn. Okay, you're going to be ahead on material. Let's go back. That's the alternate solution, but come on, style points, style points. you got to sacrifice your queen and play bishop to c4, because 
Okay, now, in order to stop this checkmate, e6 is the only move that's worth our time looking at. And uh, yeah, now you gotta save your queen. Now, it looks like queen f3 is the way to continue the attack, threatening mate again, but your opponent can just play knight f6. So if you're forcing your opponent to play a good move to stop your threat, it's not as useful. The better square for the queen is actually to go to the square e2. And this is an equally strong threat but you're number one, hiding your intentions, and number two, frankly, you're finding it, you're making it harder for your opponent to stop. What do I mean by that? Well, almost any reasonable developing move here for black loses in the exact same way. If your opponent plays knight f6, you want to break through on those light squares. So the correct move is the cruncher. Knight takes f7, forking. I'm going to win a lot of material unless you capture. And then it's a straightforward checkmate on the light squares, king g7. Queen f7 mate. Let's look at another reasonable move or reasonable looking move. I don't think losing in the opening is reasonable. Let's say that black develops the bishop to Fianchetto it. Well, you guys have already figured out what's coming. The knight takes f7 cruncher still works. Uh, what about bishop to e7? Does that save black? What do you guys think? No, it doesn't. Because after takes, 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 it is kind of true that I'm not mating you if you go here, as opposed to if you go here or here. But after the king moves here, I've already got two pawns for the piece. And if I play a move like knight to e4, it's almost an unmovable position for black. I've got the queen checking. My queen could come here and pick up your rook. If your king travels here after the queen check, uh, my knight's got certain checks like this one. Um, if you do nothing, I could just play knight here straight away to take away the king square and then mate you. I really don't think that black's extra piece means anything in this position. By the way, this is black's extra piece. No, 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 it's this one. No, it's this one. No, this it's the pinned one. Okay, none of black's extra pieces are worth anything. So going back to this position, white has sacrificed nothing to get this position. White's way ahead on development, and white is almost certainly going to win after this sacrifice knight takes f7. Even if the sacrifice is stopped, white has a very pleasant position. That's how you crush the Khan. Kids, don't be afraid of strange openings. They're strange for a reason. Uh, well, yeah, if you play my openings, you're going to consider them really strange. You're going to wonder, why is my opponent losing in 12 moves? And I have no idea why. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the Chess Kid YouTube channel. I get paid every single time you watch a video. It's only a nickel, but uh, it'll work. See you guys next time, Chess Kids. Welcome to my world. Time to attack! On the rim is grim. Are you sure you know what you're doing?